Nuclear chemistry. Wow. It's like the Pandora's box of modern technology. And it's imperative that we teach it. But it's often put off till the last few weeks, week, couple days, maybe not covered at all. A lot of decisions being made right now by politicians. And it's important that voters have the knowledge. What is radioactivity? What is a half-life? This activity pertains to half-lives. And it's actually an adaptation of one that was in ChemCom, um, and probably even predates that, in which a bunch of pennies are placed in a box, all heads up to represent the undecayed, unstable, radioactive nuclei, and shaking them that would then represent the passage of time, maybe a minute, maybe a year. And um, then you'd remove the ones that decayed, the ones that ended up tails up, and keep shaking it. The only problem with that lab, as I saw, was one shaking was one half-life. And there wasn't much room for open-endedness in terms of what if you want to show something that's more unstable or less unstable, longer half-life, shorter half-life. So I came up with this idea. In this box, I have 40 straw sections cut. They're seven millimeters long. And that wasn't too hard to do. I just used a paper cutter and marked off seven millimeter increments and just chopped them and did several at a time because you need 40 times about 12, so it gives quite a few there. Um, and they are all on their side, so if you want, they represent the unstable cytium nucleus. And if I were to shake it, give it a vigorous shaking, that would represent the passage of, now in my original write-up, I said, okay, a minute to represent a time frame. But a lot of the students thought they, that meant they had to shake it for a minute. And that wasn't the intent at all. So I changed it to a year uh, that a shaking represents. And I have not had a student yet who thought they had to shake it for a full year <laughs> to go on to the next step. So I'm going to go ahead and shake this. And the decay then will involve them not flipping over. You wouldn't see if they did that. But rather flipping to their base. And they look very different then, especially from above. Instead of being a rectangle, you see there's a little hollow circle. So here's one shaking, and if I could have an assistant to come up on the board, I have a little copy of the data table that they'd have, where it starts off that these are years, so it's zero years. Right now, there are 40 nuclei in there, and we're going to shake it once, twice, and just get an idea of this. So, and I'm going to, of course, have to remove the ones that decay, so I'll show you how to do that. So here's one good shaking, and I'm going to open this up, and I can see... I'm going to let that one just fall. Okay. Um, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight that I have to remove here. And a little forceps makes that easy. In the classroom, I'd have them remove them into a different box because these would roll off most of the desks. And... Okay. And so that means how many are left after one half-life? After... That would be 32. So she's going to write 32 down there. And... I also have the students predict each time, even for that first one, how many um, are going to be left. That's totally a prediction out of the blue for the first time, because they have no idea. But now they're thinking, well, maybe 26 will be left. Okay, so we'll give another shaking here. And we'll see. Oop, I got one sitting on top there. There we go. And I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine decayed this time. One, which is kind of counterintuitive. Um, i get both those at once. So how many are left then? If we had 32 and then 9, we got down to uh, 23. And what I like about this lab is that for a, a sample size of only 40, the, uh, the results are often very screwy. I mean, they're not that neat at all. I like that. I might shake it now and have only like one go. Or four. <laughs> And this is very good because it talks about the uh, significance of having larger sample sizes. Um, so with three then, uh, four, good, wow, you're fast. Um, so we can keep doing this. And they are told to keep shaking it. Oh, look at that. I had four the last time and I got uh, two, four, six, eight more decayed. I'm down to 11, right? I think you can see that if I were to graph this data, it would not be all that clean. Two more decayed. I should be down to nine. Whoop. That one's being tricky. 
Do I have nine? Three, six, nine. Yep. Okay. And, ooh, I got three to decay that time. I'm down to six. And I'll stop there, although I'll, uh, you get the idea, certainly. And they keep doing that until literally they're zero. And the, the results might go from here. Six, six, four, two, one, 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 zero. I mean, it could be just ridiculous. But when they pool the class data, oh, let me show you over here on this graph. This is actually not that bad for an individual. We ran this trial before, 40, 27, and so forth. But then for pool class data, where they take an average, the results are almost identical each year, each class. It's amazing that a bunch of what we could be considered lousy data <laughs> ends up adding together to make the same exact pattern. And it's funny, I used to do this in my class. Um, I was able to project this on, not project it, uh, have it show up on um, the, uh, the, the data was plotted and showed up on the TV screen. And I go to the TV screen directly and draw a best fit line on the TV screen. You know, a little permanent pen. But I, and then just so they could get an idea, I'd talk about that. And that best fit line would look kind of like this. And the neat thing you can do from that is you can figure out the half-life. Well, one time I forgot to erase it from one class. And then the next class came in, did their whole thing. And they were amazed that when I put the graph up there, the best fit line was already drawn for it on the TV monitor from the previous class. So it's that reproducible. Um, you get really nice results. But notice the half-life is nowhere near one year. Um, to get an idea for that, we would take and go from here at zero, it's up at 40. To get half of that, you go to 20 over and down. And maybe get a half-life of 1.8 years. Is that reproducible? Well, let's see from 20 to 10 over and down. That about maybe 2.2. Five over and down. That looks like another 2.2. You average those. It's pretty consistent. And um, the other thing I like about the straws is that after they do that, they do it a second time with a different set of straws that have been cut much shorter. These took a little while to sit on their edge. They're only four millimeters in length. And that changes the story completely. Can you see those okay? When they fall over, which they tend to do pretty easily, um, setting them up just involves kind of going like this and taking the time. Whoop. Yeah, although this takes a long time to get it set up, the uh, actual decay is much faster, so it compensates for that. So here's one shaking with that. That's 40. And you can just write this below. Write another 40 there. This is for the, a different isotope that would be more unstable. And uh, we'll give this one shaking. And you can see I got that <laughs> a whole lot of them decayed. And I'm probably going to count them as I take them out. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. 16, 18, 20. Whoop. <laughs> There's one that really decayed. Um, it's easier now to count the ones that are left in there. So generally with two or three shankings, shakings of this, I think this one was up on its side. I got three, six, nine, eleven left in there. <laughs> now I'm down to three. And here's kind of cheating. Ready for this? Watch. I'll take these three. <laughs> Put them back in there. Oh, I got one left. Get rid of these two. Why do I think it'll be faster with my fingers? I don't know. <laughs> and I'm down to zero. So that thing decayed much faster. And I haven't plotted on the same graph, and here's this bottom one with some trial ones. So there was the first regular one, and then the shorter one with a much faster decay rate. So, I like this. It's very versatile. You could cut them different lengths. I wouldn't cut them much thinner than that because they then become impossible to get set up and have a very short half-life. But anyway, uh, so a nice little way to demonstrate radioactive decay and the concept of half-life. Thank you.